God bless you. We've come now to the 11 o'clock hour. It is time now for us to prepare our hearts to receive our lecturer. Amen. Amen. And we're excited about, amen, hearing him on today. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, we come even now to that throne of grace, and Lord, we recognize that without you, we could do nothing. But with you and through you, we know that all things are possible. So Lord, we come to say thank you. First of all, for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your son, Jesus who died on Calvary's cross to redeem our souls. And then we thank you, Lord, for giving and providing us for all of our needs. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And when we look back over our lives, we realize if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you. We couldn't praise you enough. And so we give you glory right now. We lift up your name and we say thank you. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts to receive the meal that you have prepared. Help us to receive the servant that shall share and feed us the bread from on high. Bless us now. In the matchless name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Our musical staff, Dr. Wells and Herb Moore, is going to come now and bless us in song. Bless you. Good morning. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. I'm excited about our lecture. I'm excited. I've been excited since the first time. God is good. Amen. Bow your heads with us as we go to the throne in song. Shackled by your head. The burden beneath the load of guilt and shame. No, but then the hand of Jesus touched me. No longer the same. Next verse. Since I met this blessed and wonderful Savior, and since He cleansed and made, made me whole. Oh, 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 oh,
something Something happened in the world touch me and me he made my baba shout God excuse me he touched me <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. he touched me and oh, Something, something happened, and now I'm not the same. Whoa, 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 he touched me. I'll talk about who's here. that now <laughs> praise God praise God it is my privilege now to present our lecturer who just happens to be our national guest from the new Salem Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Tennessee yesterday we feasted as he taught us from above, uh, he, he, he helped us <laughs> know that in a time like this, we need to know that him able, <laughs> amen, God is able, amen, and if you heard him last night, my, 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 I learned so much last night. Amen. And so we're anticipating, amen, to go deeper in this hour. Let me present him. Dr. Frank Ray will come now and bless us. Thank you to our moderator, Dr. Field Park, to our presider, Reverend Thomas, to our women's leader and president, Sister Gloria, and to all of you, our brothers and sisters, it is good to be here. I'm certain that you've stopped the day to say to the Lord, thank you for him bringing us safe this fall. He didn't have to wake us this morning, but he did. And that alone is enough to be thankful for. Then to have the privilege of being able to come to this wonderful place and to worship the Lord again. I'm in love with God and in love with his church. Yes, sir. In the last 50 five years I have missed church one Sunday uh, and uh, the only reason I missed then I was on a ship and couldn't get there uh, but I think that when you're born again right. you ought to want right. to go to church uh, amen that's a part of us that's part of our lives I want to thank our moderator and this association 
for such a wonderful work that you're doing in this area for the upbuilding of the kingdom and how you're blessing people all over the land. And I encourage you to continue the good work. Don't come down, whatever you do. I want to thank our singer, my God, boy, he, he, he can not only sing, he's sharp too. He, he, he's super sharp. He, <laughs> amen. James chapter 1. Verses 1, 2, and 3. In King James Version. James, a servant of God. Yes, sir. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Thank you so much. I want to just kind of talk, and again, this is a lecture. I want to just kind of talk through this. Uh, I believe that it will bless some of us through the word. Let me approach it by saying that there are three, at least three ways to approach any text in the Bible. All right. One is called topical. The second is textual. Yeah. And the third is expository. Yeah. Topical teaching is when you think of an idea and you go to the scripture to find a text to match your subject. What we normally do there is we eisegete the text instead of exegete. In other words, you read into the text your own belief instead of pulling from the text what the Holy Spirit had deposited into the text. Now, of course, that can be dangerous because you can make the Bible say what you want it to say. I can literally show you in the scripture where it's right to kill yourself. In Matthew 27, verse 5, the Bible said, And Judas went and hung himself. John 10, 30, Luke 10, 37, Jesus said, Go and do likewise. <laughs> John 13, 27, he said, what you do, do quickly. <laughs> Be because we always come to the text with preconceived ideas. Uh, we have already placed in our mind what that passage is saying. And sometimes we got it from the lyrics of a song. Sometimes we picked it up from non-biblical literature. Wow. And sometimes we pick up things from Sunday school teachers that were not prepared to teach. And so we have to be careful when we, when we deal with topical teaching. All right. And then there is textual teaching. Right. Textual teaching is a good way to teach but now bear in mind that there are over 300 translations now. And you have to be careful even with textual teaching. Simply because the Bible was written in its original Hebrew and Greek languages. And, and uh, in the Hebrew and Greek languages, there are 12,000 words in the Bible. In our King James translation, there are only 6,000. And when the translator translated the Hebrew Greek into our English translation, he had to duplicate some words to be able to put 12,000 in the 6,000. Meaning this, that there are words that spell the same way, but have different meanings. All right. For instance, in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus came, speaks at all power. The Greek word is exorcia. It means authority. 
Acts 1 and 8 said, ye shall receive power, spell the same way, but the Greek word is dunamis, where you get the word dynamite. Right, right. Ephesians 6 and 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power, the Greek word is kratos, that's demonstrated power. Spell the same way, but have different meanings. So even at textual teaching, it is always good to try to be as true to the text as you possibly can because culture changes things. Uh, there's a woman that's mentioned in all three synoptic writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Her name was Mary. She came to Jesus and she washed his feet with her tears. She wiped them with her hair. Now, looking at it from the textual standpoint, it looked like that Mary just showed up and became emotional and started washing Jesus' feet and had enough tears to do it. But when you look at it from the cultural standpoint, at that day, they carried with them tear bottles. And every time they would cry, they would catch the tears in a bottle. If they were depressed, they would catch depressed tears. If they were grieving, they would catch grieving tears. If their hearts were broken, they would catch broken-hearted tears. Mary's tear bottle fill up. And when her tear bottle fill up, she found Jesus. And when she found Jesus, she poured all of her tears on his feet, meaning she was pouring all of her problems at the feet of Jesus. But then there's what you call expository teaching. Expository teaching deals with interpretation, investigation, and application. In other words, you find out what the Bible is saying, uh, and then you find out what it means, and then you apply yourself. Investigation, you find out what it is saying. Interpretation, you find out what it means. Application, you find out how you fit into the text. Because whenever you read the scripture, it is like standing in front of a mirror. And when you stand in front of the mirror, you don't see the person down the street. You see the one standing in the mirror. Makes sense to y'all. And in saying that, what we must always do, instead of the Bible, find the person that pinned the text. Because the person that pinned the text had a purpose in why he was doing what he was doing. In saying that, let's take a few moments and walk through the text, if you don't mind. Because when you open the text, the first thing you see is a problem. He says, James. He says, I don't see why that's a problem. Well, it's, it's a problem because we don't know who he is. You see, I had no problem reading the epistles of Paul, his writings, because every book of Paul's writing, he opened by saying, Paul, a prisoner, Paul, a servant, Paul, a slave. Uh, but I had no problem because there's only one Paul in the Bible. When Peter penned his writing, he opened his epistle by saying, Peter. I had no problem with that because there's only one Peter in the Bible. But there are at least three James. There's one James that's called James, the brother of John. Then there's another James called James the Less. And then there's another James, James, the brother of Jesus. You see, Jesus had four half-brothers, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. He had four. Which James was this? Because he just opened the passage by saying, just saying, James. I wanted to know who he was, so I had to go through my eliminating process. All right. I discovered it was not James, the brother of John, because Acts chapter 12 said he was killed by Hera. Uh, it's, it couldn't have been him. Then that's another James called James the Less. James the Less, that's all he was, just less. In other words, he was just a number in the footprint of history. He didn't do anything. He was just one of the 12. But then there's another James, James, the brother of Jesus. I had some problems with that James because in Mark chapter 3, when Jesus was teaching in the temple, the, the brothers and mothers came to see Jesus. 
And they came, and they, neither one of them came into the temple. They stood on the outside, sent an usher on the inside. So go in and tell Jesus his mother and brothers want to see him. And Jesus stopped and said, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And then he answered, my mother and brothers are the ones that do the will of my father. But John chapter 7 said Jesus' brothers did not believe him. So this don't sound like somebody that don't believe Jesus in writing this epistle. I was getting ready to close the record on this, James, until I went to 1 Corinthians 15, 7. It was after Jesus had made several pit stops and allowed people to see him on the other side of the resurrection. All right. He first of all allowed Mary. We call her Mary Magdalene. Her name is Mary. She came from a town called Magdalene. He allowed her to see him. Right. He allowed several others to see him on the other side of the resurrection. He went to the lake of Tiberia. There were seven disciples. He went up there and hollered from the shore, children, have you any meat? He allowed them to see him. Then he allowed 500 brothers at one time to see him. But 1 Corinthians 15, 7 said he finally made an appearance to his brother James. It was then that James accepted him as Lord and Savior. I had a second problem with it after I discovered it was James, the brother of Jesus. I said, my God, why wouldn't he put some handles on his name? I mean, here he is, the brother of Jesus. He slept in the bed with him. He went to school with him. They had the same mama. <laughs> They grew up in the same neighborhood. I mean, if that had have been me, I would have had a long resume yes. and let the world know that Jesus is my brother. Right. But Jesus, if you notice, John, James said, don't get caught up in the title seeking. Right. <laughs> he didn't call himself Rabbi James, Archbishop James, Dr. James, Pope James. He just said, James. You know what I discovered when you know who you are and know whose you are? You don't get caught up in the title seeking. He just said, James. But then he said, James, a servant. Greek word for servant is the word doulos. The word doulos means slave. But he was not just a slave. He was a bond's slave. They had a law then every seven years that sometime they would release slaves and set them free. Now occasionally, if a slave had a good master and his master treated him well, when he was set free, he would go to the slave master and say, I want to be your willing slave. Because you took care of me, you took care of my home, you took care of my family, you've given me titles, you've given me a name. I want to remain your slave. Whenever that would happen, then the master would take the slave and stand him up at the door and allow him to lean his head over against the door. He would get an ice pick, stick a hole in his ear, and place an earring in there and release the slave. And everywhere the slave would go when someone spotted the earring, the earring said that you have been set free, but you chose to remain a willing slave. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15. Now, I don't know why you wear earrings, but that's where it came from. <laughs> you always said that. <laughs> that's why it means that I have been set free, but I chose to remain a willing slave. He is a slave. But James was not the only slave. We were slaves. Not only were we slaves, we still are. We used to be slaves to sin. But now we're slaves to the Savior. And that was what we did. We switched masters. We had a hard task master yesterday, but we got a good master now. 
He said, James, a servant. Then he tell us in the text who he belonged to. It's always good to know who you belong to. He said, we, James, a servant of God. Yeah. Hebrew word for God is Elohim. Greek word for God is Theos. He said, I belong to God. My God, if we could get people to remember who you belong to. I think sometimes we don't know who our owner is. And there's a passage that we always preach during Palm Sunday. When Jesus says to his disciples, go over the next town and you'll see an ass coat tied. Get him and bring him to me. And if the owner asks you, why loose you the coat, tell him the master have need of him. But here's how that translation should read. Go over and get the ass coat. If the owner asks why loose you the coat, Tell the owner that the owner of the owner have need of him. <laughs> Y'all don't like me this house. Because we need to know who the owner is. Little boy was bragging about, about uh, what he had. His mother gave him a, a rooster. His, his daddy gave him a milk cow. And his, his uncle gave him uh, a few dollars. And he went to school bragging about what he had. I got a cow, I got a rooster, I got some money. And the mother heard about it. She said, baby, I heard you've been up school bragging about what you got. I said, mama, that's all. She said, sit down, baby. So read Psalm 50, verse 10. So the cattle of a thousand hills belong to me. The boy said, I done lost my cow. But I still got my chicken and my money. So read verse 12. So the fowls of the air <laughs> belong to me. He said, I just lost my cow and lost my chicken, but I still got my money. She said, go to Hagar 2 and 8. He said, the silver is mine <laughs> and the gold is mine, said the Lord. Boy, I said, I've lost everything. He said, no, don't stop. Go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 18. No, you're not. You're not your own. You have been bought with a price. <laughs> you don't even belong to yourself. But we have an owner. I don't want to get happy in this house. We got, a, we got an owner. It's a James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch what he says. He didn't just say Lord. He didn't just say Jesus. He didn't just say Christ. He said, Lord, Kurios, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christos. He said, I belong to the Father and to the Son. The boy made him a sailboat, took the boat out on the water, he put his signature on it. Little boats floated out and got too far for the young man to reach. He kept waiting and hoping that his boat would float back to shore, but it didn't. He went the next day, it wasn't there. He went the next day, it didn't come back. He was disturbed, upset that he lost the boat that he had made with his hands. Uh -huh. Finally one day, he went downtown and passed the souvenir shop and saw his boat in the window. He rushed in and said to the owner, oh my God, you found my boat. Thank God you found my boat. He picked up the boat to get ready to leave. The owner said, sir, where are you going? He said, that's my boat. That's my boat. He said, I'm sorry, son. That's not your boat there. Huh. Talk to me some. He said, what you mean? He said, that don't belong to you. He said, if you get this boat, you got to pay for it. And the young man went out and found him some little odd and end jobs till he got enough money to pay for the boat. He walked in, boat still there. He gave the owner what he had asked for the boat and walked out talking to the little boat. He said, boat, 
you mind two times. You mind the first time because with my hands I made you. So you mind the second time because with my money I bought you. Not said to us, you mind two times. You mind number one because with my hands I made you. But you mind the second time because with my blood I bought you. James, the servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes. There were 12 tribes of the children of Israel. The tribes split. Ten tries went in one direction, two went in the other. One yeah. of the reasons they split is because they were black. <laughs> they were African Americans. <laughs> they were colored folk. They were <laughs> Negroes. Uh, you you want to know why I know? How you know? They wouldn't follow leadership. <laughs> they grumbled. And complain all the time. They always had problems with their leader, Moses. <laughs> they stayed hungry. <laughs> they wouldn't leave that burial ground. Oh yeah, they were they were black. They were scattered. The Greek word for scattered is diaspora. Dios means through, spora means to sow. Many times you in situations you don't know how you got there. But God so saints. Uh, he puts you in peculiar places. Sometimes you don't even know how you arrive there. But God puts you there for a purpose. But then he tells you how to act in verse 1. He used the words greetings. Cairo is the Greek word for greetings. It means leap for joy. Don't leap for joy because you're going through, but in spite of going through. Yeah. Wow. One of the things about the Christian family is that God teaches us a new way of counting and a new way of looking. Isn't it amazing just to look and change your demeanor? Two people can look out of a window. One will see mud. The other will see the sun. Two people can look at a rose bush. One will see thorns. The other will see roses. Wow. Two people can look at water in a glass. One will say it's half empty. Other ones said, no, it's half full. Two men went to Africa. They were shoe salesmen. And uh, they flew in on the same plane. They checked into the same hotel. Uh, the next day, they went out and surveyed the land of Africa. Both came back to their rooms. And they called the headquarters, one right behind the other. The first one called, he said, he said, boss, listen, cancel the shoe order. For nobody over here is wearing shoes. The one in the next room called same headquarters and listen, send all your shoes you got. Because everybody over here needs shoes. It's based upon how you look at it. You have two people sitting on the front pew bearing mama. One crawling all under the pew crying and screaming and hollering. The other sister right by got a smile on her face. Came from the same woman, from the same womb. But one is saying, I lost my mother. What am I going to do? Mama is gone. The one right next to her look at the same situation. She said, Lord, I thank you. For 85 years, you gave me mama. I wish I had some help in there. Both sitting on the same seat. But it's the way you look at it. Whenever you're going through things in life, if you look at it and say, life is hard. 
I don't know how I'm going to make it. Somebody right next to you said, God, you're up to something. Wow. Y'all don't like that. Yeah. You see, when you look at it and think that life is giving you a bad deck, you keep your head down. But when you go through stuff, so uh-uh, God is getting ready to do something. Sometimes God has to take stuff from us to give us stuff. Sometimes God has to mess us to bless us. Sometimes God has to hurt us to lift us. He says, my brother and I like it because Paul placed himself with us. He said, I need y'all to know I'm not writing to you as a stranger, uh, James. I'm not writing to you as a stranger. I'm writing to you as being in the family. He said, my brother and count. The word count in the Greek language is hagiamai. With hagiamai come from banking terminology. It is like a spreadsheet. You know, when you get ready to make big loans, you go to the bank with your spreadsheet. The spreadsheet gives you your asset and your liabilities, your income and your expenditures. Well, that's what James said we do. We, we put a spreadsheet out there. We put our good days on one side, our bad days on the other. The day we got friends, that's a good day. Enemies, that's a bad day. Got a little money, that's a good day. Broke, that's a bad day. Help, that's a good day. Sickness, bad day. James says, stop doing that. He said, count it. Oh, joy. Because what you thought was a good day might really be a bad day. And what you thought was a bad day, it just might have been a good day. If we're honest with ourselves, it was not our friends that really strengthened us. It was our enemies. Preach remember. Wow. Friends wish you well. Pat you on your back. But enemies bring the real you out. <laughs> your enemies will send you to the scripture. Your enemies will put you on your knees. Your enemies will have you at church. Yes. Yeah. Psalms 110 says, sit still while I make your enemy your footstool. Right. I, 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 I had some problem with that until one day I was changing a light bulb in the house and I was too short to reach the bulb. So I had to get me a stool to step up on the stool. Yeah, yeah. And while I'm on the stool, the Holy Spirit said, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Yeah. Your enemies will help you reach some yeah. stuff. You couldn't reach without your enemies. Wow. Teach Reverend Ray. You see, don't fall out with your enemies. Matter of fact, every once in a while, you ought to write them a thank you letter. So I just want to tell you, thank you. It hadn't been for you. I wouldn't be where I am. Now thank you. Thank God for your enemies. It was David that said, before I was afflicted, he said, I went astray. <laughs> He said, to be honest, it was good for me that I've been afflicted. Thank God for your enemies. 
Count it. All. You know the definition for all? Is all. Because Romans 8, 28 said, we know <laughs> that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose. There are several ways of looking at your suffering. You can pray to escape it. You can pray to endure it, or you can pray to enlist it. If you pray to escape it, you make suffering your enemy. If you pray to endure it, you make suffering your master. But if you pray to enlist it, you make suffering your servant. Y'all don't hear me in this house. You. you see, because we have to understand God is sovereign. Yeah. He can do what he wants to do whenever he gets ready to do it. You cannot ruin God's plan. You cannot wreck God's purpose. Yes. You cannot resist God's power. He's too omnipresent to be absent, too omnipotent to be weak. He's too omniscient to be dumb. He's too exact to error. He's too punctual to be late. <laughs> He's too loving not to care. He's too holy to be defiled. He's too right to be wrong. You see, God never has to leave anywhere to get anywhere. He's already where he's going. And still where he was. He can tiptoe. And stand flat at the same time. He can take a crooked stick. And hit a straight lick. My brother and count it all. Joy. Count it all. It's different between joy and happiness. And I'll let y'all go. Ha happiness is based upon what's happening. Yeah. All right. If there are no happenings, there'll be no happiness. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's why marriage lasts for a while and stop lasting. Because what used to happen right. ain't happening right. like it used to happen. Teach them right. <laughs> but joy is different. Okay. Happiness is external. Joy is internal. internal. Right. Okay. Take the J. Allow it to stand for Jesus. Take the O, the Y. Allow it to stand for you. The O in the middle, what messes up, we allow it to stand for other things or other folk. Yes, sir. That means the reason you can't have joy is because you got something or some person between you and Jesus. But to have real joy, let the J stand for Jesus. The Y for you. Let the O be a mathematical zero. That mean nothing. <laughs> between you and Jesus. And when there's nothing between you and Jesus, you're talking about real joy. That's why the song right said, this joy that I have. The world, I can't do that. <laughs> Didn't give it to me. And the world. <laughs> can't take it. 
<sighs> Count it all. <laughs> Joy. I'm through that the theological seminary. Professor had his seminarians to follow him one day at school. So close up your books. Get up from your desk. Follow me out on the yard, the campus of the school. They followed him out. He said, I want to teach you all a lesson of grace. You see, grace is the sister to joy. Joy is Cairo. Grace is caress. They sisters. They walked out and saw somebody had taken one bite of a hamburger and threw it on the yard, on the campus. A little bird came, was pecking on the hamburger. The professor said to the seminarians, look at that. See the bird eating that hamburger meat? They said, yes. He said, that's grace. They said, how is that grace? He said, well, the bird don't have a meat packing company. Don't have a deep freezer or warehouse, but he's enjoying the delicious delight for delectable meat. He said, that's grace. That's After a while, a little bird start pecking on the tomato. So see the bird eating the tomato? He said, yes. He said, that's grace. He says, how is that grace? He said, well, the bird don't have a, 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 he don't have a truck patch. He don't have a produce company. And yet he's enjoying this delicious tomato. He said, that's grace. <laughs> After a while, little bird start picking on the bread. The boss said, see him eating the bread? He said, yes. He said, that's grace. He said, the bird don't have a wheat company. <laughs> don't have a bakery. And yet he's enjoying this delicious uh, bun. So that's grace. Bird got through eating it, and then a bird flew into a little puddle of water and bathed his body. So see the bird bathing his body. He said, yeah, he said, that's grace. So how is that grace? It's grace because the bird don't have a jacuzzi. Don't have a foot tub, but number three tub, but he's bathing his body in water from a well he didn't dig. After a while, a little bird flew up from the puddle of water Lit on a limb and start singing. Yeah. <laughs> Professor said, hear the bird singing? They said, yeah. He said, that's joy. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Because when you get through with grace, you talking about joy. I'm through. <laughs> Thank God for joy. Oh, the world 
Amen, amen. Did not you enjoy our lecturer for today? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. How do you count your ex experiences? Amen. Amen. I, I, I get tired of that song. I've had some good days. I've had some bad ones. All of my days are joy days. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, real quickly, as time flees us, we're going to receive just a few remarks, amen, from our newest corporate um, covenant partner, Fort Lauderdale University is coming, their representative, Dr. Steve Cardwell, amen, and he's coming to give us greetings. No, that's what they said. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't get it out of the bag, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you get a Lord a hand clap of praise today? Come on, let's give God a hand. Amen, clap of praise, amen, amen. We bring you greetings, amen, on behalf of our Chancellor, uh, Chancellor Henry Fernandez, Bishop Henry Fernandez, and we are here today uh, to give a presentation concerning the University of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have uh, instituted a new program that we think uh, most of not, if all of our churches in the Florida General Baptist Convention will have benefit of. Uh, we've created a program that is a certification program. This certificate program is designed to help the churches to enhance their leadership, enhance their staff personnel. And we have some of our uh, uh, representatives from the university here. We have Dr. Piper. Uh, she is here to give us an overview along with uh, other staff members uh, today to help us get a better grasp on understanding the need for education. The Bible says in all you're getting, get what? Understanding, amen. It also says, instruct a righteous man and he will gain wisdom, amen. And so we are, we are here to help us, our sister churches, uh, to do just that. And Dr. Piper, if you could, will come now and give us an overview of the uh, certification program uh, we have five areas of certification. Uh, we are uh, dealing with the business of church, which is what we have. It's called church administration. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for Dr. Piper as she comes. Amen. And uh, we, have, we have some other areas of certification, multimedia certification. Amen. Thank you so much. Multimedia certification. Uh, and so I'm going to let Dr. Piper give us that overview, and I'll come back with some other important messages. Hi, good morning everyone, and thank you for this wonderful welcome. We are pleased to be here. So, as Dr. Caldwell introduced me, I'm Dr. Piper. Okay, so I'm Dr. Piper from the University of Port Lauderdale. So, our Religious Studies Certification Program is aimed at enhancing the community that attend church, um, the congregation, and the pastors. The certification program has five tracks. Now the tracks, you, you can have um, counseling, Christian counseling, you can have church administration, you can have multimedia, and those are just a few of them, okay? The, you, um, you can take five classes or you can take seven. Each class lasts eight weeks, okay? So we're trying to make it affordable time-consuming, um, where, where you'll be able to manage your time, time management, and then you can do it at home. You don't have to come to our campus to do these classes. We will provide you everything that you need. The certification programs come with your textbooks, so, and a teacher or facilitator. Um, the program is set to 
to begin in May, which is our fall, which is our fall semester. Okay, so if you need um, additional information, we have um, some information out front. You can please sign up so that we can give you all the um, information that you'll need. Okay, so look forward to seeing you at the front of the um, entry. Bye. Amen. Thank you so much. You can take that with you, Dr. Piper. Amen. So, so here, 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 is, here it is, Florida East Coast. Thank you so much for allowing us to present to you today. Um, Fort Lauderdale University, University of Fort Lauderdale is in Lauder Hill. Uh, we have these certification programs uh, that came to light with the consultation of pastors. Uh, we met with pastors twice, uh, had a round table discussion, about 20 to 25 pastors. And, and the pastors indicated to us that this was the need that they saw uh, that was uh, uh, pressing in their ministries. A lot of people don't have time to go to or go through a four-year bachelor's degree program. However, you can increase your knowledge you can increase your acumen as an individual that works in the church. You may be a volunteer, one who is volunteering your services to the church. Uh, for instance, there are a lot of people that do Christian counseling, uh, but have not had one class in counseling. Right. Hello, somebody. Uh, uh, there, there are those who uh, don't have uh, the, the gifting of Pastor Ford uh, to do the things that he does. That man is a magician. Uh, uh, but, but, but those of us who want to learn more about multimedia and help Pastor Ford to take some of the burden off of him, that when it comes to troubleshooting, you can be the troubleshooter. But you need to have a foundation. You need to have a working knowledge of how to handle multimedia and all its nuances. We can help you do that. We can help you do that. Some pastors... Uh, need to know how to take, take care of themselves in order to take care of the flock. Pastoral care and counseling, we are offering that for you. Uh, there is uh, the business of church. How many of you all know that church is a business? Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk to the lights here. Uh, how many of you all know that church is a business? Sometimes we don't think church is a business. We think church is just a place where you can get a hand out without giving a helping hand up. And so the church is a business. It has to be run like a business. It, it, you can't run it like a mom and pop, can't, like the candy lady down the street. Okay, y'all shouting me down right now. You can't run it like the candy lady down the street. There's some, there are things that you have to, to be able to be in compliance with from the federal government. Even though there's a separation of church and state, there are things that you have to comply with. Uh, you are a 501c3, you have, you have to know how to keep your 501c3 intact. If there's payroll involved with that, you have to know which company you might want to use to be able to, uh, uh, to handle your payroll or do things internally. We can help you get that understanding. If you volunteer in the church, we want you to be better so you can be a better member, your church can be a better church, and your pastor can have an easier time managing the, the way through ministry. And so we have, we have all those courses, and we have some more courses uh, in the uh, pipeline. Chaplaincy, a lot of pastors talked about chaplaincy and wanting to learn and be certified, a certified chaplain. So we are going to be out front, and we would ask that you would stop by Get information if you have questions. This is not the setting that I'm told for question and answers. We can answer those questions for you outside. But we are partnering with Florida East Coast. We are partnering with Florida General Baptist Convention. And we want to enhance the life of the churches that we serve, the partnerings that we are engaged in. And we want to make you a better person to make your church a better church. Thank you, moderator Phil Park. Question, Dr. Phil Park? Yes, uh, you, can, you can Google us at the University of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we can, we'll be right there. You can see uh, the university. Do we have, I don't have the, um, the email, the website offhand. I don't, I don't have the cards in.
Did everyone hear that? UFTL dot E D U. I had I had a senior moment, uh, Dr. Piper. Amen. Uh, thank you, uh, moderator Phil Park, for that. And yes, all of the courses are online. Now it's going to take some discipline on your part, uh, but you can get it done. And so, uh, if you want to enhance biblical studies, if you want to enhance Christian counseling, if you want, if you are a minister. Uh, you are a staff minister. We have a certification in theology, uh, Dr. Ray, so you can be almost as close to Dr. Ray as you possibly can. You, you can get closer. You ain't going to catch up, <laughs> but you can get closer. Amen. Uh, and, and we can help you all with that. Amen. Thank you so much uh, for your time and your attention. Thank you, Brother Moderator. I have, I have six children, and I raised them all, and I had to use these things. Amen, back then. Amen, but I'm out of practice of how to get it out now. <laughs> Amen. Thank God again for the University of Fort Lauderdale. Amen. www.uftl.edu. One more time www.uftl.edu, you can get, get in contact with them. They're one of our covenant partners. Amen. They're on the corporate level. Amen. And we thank God for them. I want to say this, and then I'll move forward. I want to say, amen, that on that ministerial advisory council were members pastors of this association amen florida east coast was is represented on the clergy counseling amen and advisory board to this university that helped create amen these certification courses amen as we're getting ready now to play the video amen in place of offerings amen the florida east coast have what we call Amen. The Covenant Partner Program. A amen. Amen. We, we, we are excited. Amen. About our Covenant Partners Program. Our goal is to try to reach this year over 1,000 Covenant Partners. And we're trying to do that. Amen. By reaching a goal of 25 new partners today. Amen. Amen. And so we want to play this video, want you to watch the video. I want you to know, amen, that our Covenant Partners program reaches, amen, mission, education, amen, and evangelism throughout not only our district, but throughout our state and throughout our nation. Amen. In fact, we are even in mission overseas. Amen. Stay tuned now and listen just to this brief video. Hello. I am Pastor Toby Philpart, moderator for the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. We have three core objectives. Mission, evangelism, and education. In the areas of mission and education, our I Serve team comprised under the leadership of our young adult and youth coordinator, Lady Lawana Parrott, accompanied by our two sons of thunder, Pastor Brandon Jones and Pastor Remiel Lockwood, and then senior Pastor Benjamin Parrott. They led the way with our loving Louisiana campaign. Dr. Ellis McKenzie, your effort towards our Helping Haiti campaign pushed us over the top in reaching our goal. Dr. Benley Thomas, our godly father of world missions and the leader of the Virgin Island Mission Organization, we decree continued support for all you do for kingdom building worldwide. Dr. Jerry Young, our national chieftain and the Foreign Mission Board, we are proud to be part of the mission and evangelistic efforts. In the areas of education, we are grateful to our scholarship committee under the leadership of Lady Angelia Shellman. 
And we embrace an even greater commitment to this effort in assisting young people who desire to continue their academic and technical education. President Parrott and Dean Dr. Joyce Dunlap continue to show the rest what it looks like to be the best in facilitating Christian education to the masses. Our Covenant Partner Program, it has proven to be successful. Will you consider partnering with us today? It provides access. You become armed through our upcoming FECBA app. We give you assistance in church growth, and then you become part of an alliance in the mandate of mission, evangelism, and education. 2021, 172 of you partnered with us in the Covenant Partner Program. That resulted in close to $40,000 in revenue that made these contributions possible. Our goal for 2022, we are believing God and asking you to partner with us so that we are able to reach 1,000 Covenant Partners in 2022. We can do this, yes, we can. We are 75 plus active local churches strong. We will do this, yes, we will. For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse nine, but as it is written, I have not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man things God has prepared for them that love him. We here at the Florida East Coast Baptist Association, we love the Lord. We really love the Lord. Become a covenant partner today. Thank you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, to our online audience, those of you on site, we're getting ready now to break for the afternoon. We have uh, Restructured our annual session. Afternoons are yours. Let the church say amen. You can golf, you can fish, you can do whatever it is you enjoy. We simply ask that you come back tonight. And if you've been online, I just want to encourage you as much as we are appreciative of the fact that you have been with us. We've noticed 30 to 40 persons on our Facebook page not to mention the YouTube page, not to mention the Florida East Coast website. So we know, Dr. Ray, that we have had 100 plus each day. Even people in Memphis, Tennessee have been with us. But if you can make it tonight, you won't be disappointed. And Dr. Ray, I can hear him in his spirit. He says, if y'all don't get me out of here, I'm almost convinced to become a covenant partner. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Frank Ray, for blessing us so real, real good. Come on, put your hands together in appreciation, a sign of appreciation for Dr. Ray. Uh, so I close with this just for clarity. Because of our rich history, the Florida Memorial University, they are, they will remain to be our number one partner as it relates to uh, higher learning. Florida Memorial opened a session on Tuesday night, the Ambassador Corral, and we participate with our state convention in supporting our school. We thank God for allowing us to follow his flow. We now have partners like Fort Lauderdale University and how appreciative are we to see that there's a university focused on those who perhaps cannot go through a four-year program, but at the same time, they can acquire the knowledge on how to better do the work of the church. We have another partner, and we'll close with a video from our partner, the Nova Southeastern University, where Florida East Coast if the Lord says the same, uh, this time in June of this year, your moderator will have a graduate degree, a master's of science, amen, organization, 
nonprofit organization and philanthropy. They are teaching me, amen, how to be better in uh, executing ideas in 21st century trends in faith-based organizations, and they are teaching me how to get money, amen. Money solves a multitude of problems. Y'all can sit there and look like y'all don't like money all you want to, but I know your cousin names. I know your people them. And so, dear God, we thank you for everything we've been able to do and hear and witness this day. We pray your grace, your mercy, and even your joy uh, throughout this afternoon. And if it be your will, give us the energy, give us the desire to come back to participate actively or perhaps uh, part of the virtual campus tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. A closing video from our Nova Southeastern University. To those of you that are part of the leadership Places team. of worship are going through a period of great upheaval. Even before the pandemic, attendance was dropping at alarming rates. We see shifts of congregations moving towards mega churches and digital venues. And left in the wake of these shifts are shrinking budgets and a lot of management strife. Beyond the four walls, Leaders are looking for strategies to connect with the younger generation, many of which feel disenfranchised with religious institutions. Faith-based leaders are understaffed and underfunded. They spend too much time managing the organization's administrative procedures instead of ministering. Missing is a form of education where these leaders can actually learn how to revitalize congregations and faith-based ministries. This has led NSU to launch a graduate certificate program in religious organization management. The program benefits senior leaders in their transforming these ministries, but it also benefits ministry directors looking for career mobility. And finally, it benefits administrators and directors of operation looking for ways to qualify and orient their new hires. Five programs are offered. The courses center around next generation digital outreach, stewardship, fundraising through grant development, entrepreneurial strategies, and a systems approach to both financial planning and leadership. Our unique approach includes instructors with pastoral experience and PhDs in business, a managerial approach modeled after a leading Florida MBA program and a contemporary learning environment. So find out how you could re-engage your communities with a faith-based and a fiscally prudent approach. The one-year program starts this summer. Hello, I am Pastor Toby Philpart. 